You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Beninro and Dominic Berry. I told him that first you spi split it, then you lick it, then you dunk it, and that's also how you eat an Oreo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this week I'm joined by poet extraordinaire Dominic Berry. Hey! How are you doing? Oh, I'm really well. It's so lovely to be back yes. here. I had so much fun last time Good we were time. here. It's been a year. Almost no a year. way. Almost a year since you were last with us. Oh my goodness. That flies, doesn't it? It does indeed. It does That's indeed. Cool. Wow. Well, it's super cool to be back. Great. Well, it's great to have you here. What have you got for us this week? Um, we are going to be talking about salt burn. Okay. And uh, I'm going to I'm gonna teach you a little bit about uh, word smithery, Mike. Oh. Mm. Teach you a lesson. Yeah. Sounds promising. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we even have something different instead of a game of the week with Dom's Top Poetry. On screen now, you can see our social media. Just search for at the Could TV. And as people who have popped up in our comments go along the bottom of the screen, it's time for Mike in the Buzz. <laughs> We're over Christmas now. It's been, it's gone, it's done. Yeah. Did you have some good presents though? I am super nerdy, so all of my presents were like Japanese only release video games from the okay. 1990s. Nice. So proper obscure stuff. <laughs> and uh, like what? Yeah. Uh, oh, um, a game called Royal Stone, a game called Crystal Warriors, like super nerdy stuff. Like Pokemon before Pokemon. Are these like text line ones? Like what? Sorry? Yeah, the, the text ones where you have to like type yes. Oh, not that old. I not remember that. Old. In <laughs> school, in school, where uh, they brought in the computer the on the trolley, like, one day a week. Oh, those were glorious. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember Pop? I was his name Pop? Pop, where it's like Pop can explode and his face grew. And yeah. It was, I do. Never grew old, did it? It, it never grew old. Well, it's one step above that, but only, only a small <laughs> oh, step. Just... Only a small step. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, well, people have been sharing their, their I want to say Christmas gift fails. Oh, so okay. people give you awful gifts uh -huh. uh, online. And there's been some truly brilliant ones this year. Like, would you say no to a garlic press? Garlic press? Yeah, no, just little. Oh, no, that sounds very useful. It does sound useful, yeah. but as a Christmas gift? Well, I guess it depends how much garlic you eat. Uh, that's true. Maybe they're trying to say something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, trolley bags. Tro a bag for the trolley? Not heard of trolley bags. No. Oh, they are, they're brilliant. They're like a shopping bag, but they actually... Did you get fit. a trolley bag? No, I didn't. I no. Are you sad them. you didn't get a trolley <laughs> bag? <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's a, a bag that fits inside a trolley mm -hmm. quite perfectly. So when you're doing your scan and shop shopping, you just put it in the bag. Oh. And they, they're designed to fit in the trolley, so you're not wrestling with trying to re reorganise the bag for life. Um, yeah, I'm a bit of a geek. Um, the most homophobic gift on the planet, of course, is Lynx. Right. When people give you get Lynx body set, right? but people were shocked that they came in 10 sets. So it's not just a, a, a spray in a bottle. There's a set of 10 things that come in this links. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and customized um, tomato ketchup. Oh, fab, yeah. So you get a bottle of tomato ketchup, it's not even a big bottle, with your name on it instead of Heinz. Oh, that's beautiful, yeah. Beautiful. Well up for that, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I think I'm one of those people who, like, could turn into um, a man in a home just full of junk floor to ceiling. Like, I could, like, I would, I would keep that forever. I would absolutely. <laughs> and, and, you know, the temptation to not wash it because the little bits of red would, like, be part of it would be disgusting. But something I probably would do, you know. That's great. I love that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and a half pack of socks, someone shared. They opened up a half pack... Uh, packet from the grandmother and it was half a packet of socks and I was going okay and then the dad opened the other half <laughs> <laughs> fair play fair play so, yeah so it's so just people keeping keeping thrifty cost of living crisis what and all did that. you get Mike um I was very lucky that I just got cash <laughs> oh <laughs> true <laughs> meaning of Christmas Which is the gift that giving. um because I now have a dog everyone buys gifts for the dog so I got a lot of dog toys a lot of dog treats Oh. A blanket. And I'm going, why have you given me a blanket? And the dog <laughs> ran up and went, that's mine, and ran up and went, ah, that's why I've been given a blanket. My friend, uh, his sister, got his cat a 
caravan. Not like mm -hmm. a full-size human caravan, but a cat, cat caravan. caravan. Yep. And uh, Daphne, the cat, she uh, is the kind of cat, a great name, isn't it? Uh, she, uh, she doesn't really like many toys, but the caravan, she loves it. And the genius of the caravan is really, it's, it's just like a, a box. Cats love boxes, but it's it's more aesthetically pleasing for us humans because it's got this really sweet design. But it's got a little hole in the top. She can pop her head out and she can climb in and out of the window. It is beautiful. Sounds <laughs> fun. If I get one for George. Um, <laughs> but moving on, predictions. Yeah, have you had any predictions for this year? You thought, oh, this year this is what I think will happen for me. Oh, well, you know, my year last year, if I'm listing all my years I've ever had in my life, it wasn't my favourite year, okay. <laughs> it wasn't my favourite, you know. Um, so I think, I think, you know, like Yaz and the plastic population, the only way is up. The only way is up. So that's what I Maybe. think. I think good, good for health, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, good for career, good for everything. Yeah, yeah just uh, go out and, and be us. That's all we can do, Mike, okay. isn't it? We can't be anyone else, can we? Well, we can try. <laughs> I mean, we're going to online, I'm a couple of different people. Um, <laughs> but that's enough about how I cut, man. Um, have you ever heard of um, Baba Wagner? No, I have not. Is this some kind of Russian folklore? Well, Bulgarian. Oh, OK. Um, yeah. And she was a lady that, that died in the 90s. Oh, OK. And she's predicted lots. And she never wrote anything down because she was literate. But people used to write down her predictions for her. She successfully um, predicted Princess Di's death, 9-11, um, um, Chernobyl. OK. She also predicted her own death as well, which I think is a bit of a... You can make that happen. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful for something that's clearly revered, yet I've not heard of. Mm -hmm. But when you say predicted, is it predicted like in a, in a, in a really elusive way that could be no, she's, multiple she's, interpretations? She's, she's, she's like, oh, specific. the stars will be in the nth. Yeah, you'll see quantum. the colour blue. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's actually, she's quite specific. Oh, okay. um, and she has been wrong. Right. Right. Um, but this year, what she's predicted are... Um, an assassination attempt on Putin. So she said, um, you, um, Russian pr Prime Minister will be, have an assassination attempt, right? Um, cyber attacks, um, EU terror attacks, but a cure for cancer and Alzheimer's. Right. That's what she's predicted for this year. That's all right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, you know, she's dead now, so no one's going to go, well, you were wrong, so. Oh, my word. Good day, Nostradamus. Wow. She did predict um, aliens to come over last year. But they might have. They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> she was very specific in that saying that, you know, the sky will be darkened by aliens. That didn't happen. Well, unless I slept through it. Um, but if you sleep through world events like I do, <laughs> share them with us at the Could TV on social media. And that brings us to our story of the week. YouTube. Yeah. Do you like a YouTuber? I'm not someone who follows YouTubers. Well, actually, no, I tell a lie because the nerdy video game stuff, I do follow a few people who talk okay. about the obscure stuff. Why do you ask? Well, this is because an, a fitness influencer, uh huh, mm, already fallen out with him, um, called Joe Fraser. Okay, not it's, familiar with the name. No, they're not with fitness, I'm not. <laughs> it's like, he'll teach you how to get a great body. Um, no. Um, he stayed awake for 42 hours. So Without already sleeping. on a good, healthy... Uh, yeah, yeah, as an action. experiment to show people how important sleep is and rest is. Right. Yeah. Was, I, think for I mean, isn't thing. that a bit like, oh, I'm going to, like, you know, put nails in my hand to show that putting nails in my hand is bad? Does that need to be Pretty shown? Much. Does that oh, need... Apparently so. Okay. Apparently there's a generation out there that thinks you don't need sleep. Um, but, yeah, he stayed awake for 42 hours and documented the journey. Right. Um, so he started off by saying things like, you know, the first 18 hours were easy because it was just my normal day. Because he said it was, when it was 30, hour 33, he really started to struggle. So he was drinking a lot of caffeine to try and keep himself awake, lots of sugar. Um, and he said his, his mental agility went downhill very quickly um, to the point where he actually, he didn't fall asleep, he passed out from exhaustion. We have another picture of him. That's... Uh... Yeah, in the words of Janet from the Rocky Horror Show, I, I don't like men with too many muscles. You know, I think that's uh, I mean, he, good he for him. Good, good for him. Let, let him enjoy himself. Exactly. But... He obviously puts a lot of work in and doesn't drink enough water. But anyway, uh, but that's all from the buzz this week. Thank you for that, Mike. Well, I have no intention to do anything towards making my body look anything like that. I think, you know, big lumps of chocolate and 
bread. <laughs> My New Year's resolutions, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what was it? Skate Moss said, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. She had obviously never eaten an eclair. Um, <laughs> but yeah, stick around, because coming up next, we've got Dominic and the showbiz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Dominic and Mike. Now let's get ready for the showbiz with Dominic. So, to celebrate the 1990s, we've got some new stamps, postage stamps okay. coming out. And uh, they're of a group who I remember when I was a teenager in the 90s, I felt this was the end of music. That's what I felt <laughs> as a teenager. I dislike this group so much, so much. But they are popular with many of the gays. They are the Spice Girls. I love the Spice Girls. Did you? What's I your favourite Spice Girls song? Um, to Become One. Really? Because they tell on. people to put condoms on. Well, that is a good thing. I think it's a great message. That is a great message. That yeah. is a great message. Well, here they are. Here's one of the stamps here. So, um, yeah. Oh, she's winking at me. I always felt as a teenager that there was... Uh, a, I know that most pop music is manufactured in some way, but, mm -hmm. but you know, I grew up with, like, Cyndi Lauper and Madonna, who I felt were really authentic and it just it just never really rang true for me the Spice Girls it never never made a connection but we're not just getting one stamp we're getting like about a million stamps because <laughs> there we are all the different ones there so uh, yeah yeah which which was your favorite spice my favorite spice girl was Jerry really just because she was the most chaotic yeah, I like the Jerry solo single, uh, Look At Me, the first solo mm -hmm. single. I thought that that, that was authentic, because that was all like... And, and Chico Legino. I was less keen on that one, <laughs> less keen on that one, yeah. And I liked Mel B's uh, uh, stuff. Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm going to say something lovely about the Spice Girls now. Um, I saw a clip from the 90s, which I had not seen before, and the Spice Girls are doing a uh, PR tour to mm -hmm. like different countries and they're in a, a, a European country and on this show which I believe was live on air the, the five spies seems quite early in their career and loads of uh, uh, young dancers come out white dancers in blackface and dance around right? okay and to completely contradict what I said before, I thought that the Spice Girls, especially Mel B, the, the only black person in the studio at the time, I thought that it was really skillfully done. I, I believe that they didn't know this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and Mel B was like, I mean, so much that could have been said. I think in that scenario, pretty much anything would have been... You know, an yeah. understandable reaction from Mel B. And, and Mel B was like, why haven't you got white people doing this dance? I won't say the dance itself was problematic. The right, dance okay. itself was and like, they're like, oh, you know, it's our, our tradition. It's like, uh, and Mel B's like, you could have got black people to do this dance. Why haven't you? And she's like, I'm not OK with this dance. Mm -hmm. I thought to say that and... She did it with real dignity, yeah. real dignity. Now, I never saw this at the time. This is something mm -hmm. that I've just seen recently, and it did make me reevaluate my uh, yeah. I think view a bit. The, the Spice Girls, when they were being political uh, and very PC and, and very aware of where they were, they were doing brilliant things. Um, like Jerry Halliwell talking to when they met Nelson Mandela. Jerry Halliwell went, you know, about his life and how they should be respected more, and yet he's treated appallingly and stuff. Um, so I think when, when they did speak out, they had a very good voice. Um, the songs were good. This is what he says. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are? Sing it, shake it. Yeah. Anyway, I'll stop. I'll stop singing. <laughs> Moving on. Mm -hmm. uh, if I wasn't a fan of the Spice Girls, what do you think was my subjective view of Britney Spears? Who loved her. I wasn't keen. I <laughs> no, wasn't, you loved keen. Her. You, wasn't you were, keen. You were there dressing up with the pigtails and the school out, girl outfit. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Britney Spears has had the book come out. Uh -huh. uh, have, have you read the book? I read some of the book. Did you? Well, I read the back page, which says this oh. is interesting. <laughs> Some of the book. <laughs> I've done that typical thing that people do when they want to seem more intelligent than they are, but I've read a lot of articles about the book. <laughs> okay. And I mean, you know, Britney Spears has led a, a really uh, 
really harrowing life. Yeah. Like really, really horrible things happened. And as much as so I had made... they Justin Timberlake in the in the <laughs> yeah. And of course, much has been written about the difference in treatment of Justin Timberlake to mm -hmm. the difference of treatment of Britney Spears. And there's been a lot of reports, and this is what this news article is about, about Britney's return to music. Because it wasn't that long ago that mm -hmm. Elton John included Britney Spears and had you know, a big hit mm -hmm. single Just with after the conservative ship. She had a, a song with Donald John, yeah? Yeah, the tiny dancer sampling thing. So, uh, yeah, you know, there's been all this talk. Britney is returning to the music industry. But Britney herself has been on Instagram saying that is not the case. Okay. So a lot of fans are really disappointed when you hear it from the artists themselves. I'm not returning to music. And I think that... As a kid, I always had huge disappointment in artists who didn't pledge their heart and soul till the grave, till being a singer or an actor or whatnot. And I've got real, a really different opinion these days. I think mm. that we can get so caught up in the attachment we have to a song or, or a you know, nightclub or whatnot, that we forget these are real people. And even when we're reading the traumatic real life experiences, there's still a detachment to this. Mm -hmm. So goodness me, if there's anyone who has earned a little bit of Bless. choice in yeah. their own lives, it definitely is Britney Spears. So I can understand why fans would be disappointed. I'm going to guess your Britney Spears song of choice. Okay. If you went for a slow uh, Spice Girls song, I think it's going to be a slow. This is why I don't like a lot of pop singers is just bring out the bangers, bring out the bangers, you know. Okay. Like the best Britney Spears song for me is Toxic. It Definitely. is the best Britney Spears oh. song. Oh, yes. Have I guessed? Yeah, yeah. Really? Toxic. I would have thought you'd have gone for one like, you know, sometimes. Oh, no. Really? No, I hated all of the slow stuff. Did you? Yeah, yeah. What's the difference between slow Spice Girls and slow Britney? Slow Britney was, was boring. So Spice Girls is boring. And that's why you've got a wrong opinion of the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. Let's, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> I am a person who has strong views on music, but doesn't really watch television or go to okay. the cinema that much. But I am aware of a thing called Saltburn. I loved Saltburn. Tell, tell me what you loved about Saltburn. The twist at the end. Oh, okay. Right? And you see a lot of naked men, and there's a very large penis with Sophie Ellis Baxter's music in the background. <laughs> What's not to love? What's not to love? You see a man with a nicely sized penis dancing to Murder on the Dance Floor. Well, we are on the topic of naked men with this next it's One of my favourite topics. Story. <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, the character, um, no, no, the actor, the actor Jacob. Jacob, uh -huh. there's a scene uh, where, um, is his character Felix? Is that right? Felix, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Felix. Mm -hmm. So, is there, there's something in a, in a bath? Ah, yeah, so he has a bath. Right, does he have summer. a good time in the bar? He does have a good time. He does time have in a bath. good time in the bar. And then um so another actor comes along and drinks the bath water. Like a lot of the bath and literally so he lets the plug out. Um, oh my god. So that's goodness. him enjoying himself in the bath. And that's the other actor who who's um basically he gets down and starts slurping out of the plug hole. I mean, no kink shaming, no, but Ew. <laughs> really? Oh no, no, not not the bath water, not the plug hole, no, <laughs> anything but that. No. You, oh, ba you no. basically watch him rim the plug hole. Okay, well, yeah, he felches the plug hole. Is the best way of describing oh, it because, he, my, yeah. My word, my word. You know, and I thought I lacked dignity. <laughs> he did it in the privacy of someone else's home. Just well. A company clearly know that this is a popular scene because... <laughs> yeah, uh, popular fetish? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not the taste that's being uh, uh, put into the capitalist consumeristic machine. It's the smell. OK. The smell. Smells there is fun. a candle. A candle. Jacob Elordi's bathwater. 100% natural soy wax candle. So I'm guessing it's vegan. Vegan okay. kosher? Possibly, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Would you uh, enjoy sniffing Jacob's bath water, Mike? You see, I, I would have been slurping out the plug hole as well, to be fair. Oh. Actually, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have waited for him to let the water out. I've <laughs> joined in. Um, 
where was this from? The Lux Candle Company. All of these products are, you know, I don't just mean to do with TV shows. I mean, like, beauty products, candles, perfumes. They usually have really abstract names, don't they? Like, mystery or, or you know, I, Asia. You know, like, my, really... My favourite fragrance is called Tiger, but it's spelled T-Y-G-A-R. Nonsense. Nonsense. Oh my God, so... <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a bit harsh. <laughs> <laughs> Not nonsense you liking it, but the name. The name so, yeah, yeah. so yeah, you may as well call anything anything, mightn't you? I mean, I'm sure that this smells like a soy wax candle. That's my prediction. Uh, so yeah. Oh, I'm a little bit disappointed. Go on. Um, because when you go and order, try and order this twenty-four pound candle. More expensive than a Yankee candle. Um, you get the choice of comfort spice, <laughs> sea breeze, or vanilla bean. Is Comfort Spice on one of the postage stamps? <laughs> <laughs> is that the new sick member? <laughs> she's the one with the cushions. Yeah, yeah. She sat down off stage. You don't see her very often because yeah. she's comfortable. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking, £24 for a candle, I was okay with, but then you have to change the, the, fla the flavour. The flavour? <laughs> yeah, it's flavour. <laughs> I'd eat it. We've, we've established that already. Um, so, yeah. So do you recommend I watch Saltburn? Should I, I break do. my... Uh... I do think you should watch it, OK? I know that some people, like the gallery, um, got a little bit disenfranchised with it and stopped watching it. Mm -hmm. And I completely appreciate the reasons why, but that but I think if you with watch it, it all the way through, the it's end. worth it. Yeah. OK. Well, that's the end of the showbiz this week. Thank you for that, Dom. Um, I'm going to be, well, drinking someone's bath water later. <laughs> I'm not. I'm going to sit in the shower. <laughs> But yeah, stick around. Coming up next as we have Dom's Top Poetry. Welcome back. And yes, you are watching Chewing the Cud. Now we're going to have something a little different to our game of the week as Dominic is going to read some of his poetry in Dom's Top Poetry. So, Dominic, are you ready to give us your best top bits? <laughs> well, I'm ready to share three poems, if that's what you mean, Mike. Exactly what I meant. Fantastic. All right, so here is the first of the three poems. It goes exactly like this. Maybe I am strange, but I want to ask whether I'm the only one who wishes more people cried together. I see such sadness in the world and often want to weep. Don't only mean lonely, subtle sniffles. I mean loud howls in a crowd. Sometimes my tears won't wait. Don't drop privately. They burst out publicly, embarrassing me. But I know I need to let this upset out, no doubt. And there shouldn't be shame if we don't aim to keep our feelings locked away. So, this is my pitch for a crying cafe. Imagine somewhere we could all be audibly bawling, sharing our troubles, sharing a table at a crying cafe. If you'd rather be smiling, that is OK. There are already plenty of other places for that. But if weeping's where you're currently at, let's make a date at a crying cafe. A crying cafe! We could open one up today. Take me away to the crying cafe. A welcoming space for the wettest face where we could embrace grief with grace. Oh, let's go for some bleary-eyed, snotty-nosed, tissue-soaking. I am not joking. I'd sincerely love a place where we could all sob safely, fairly trade sorrows over the flattest flat white, no sweetener needed, a cathartic cuppa with caring comrades. And nobody is trying to correct us. It's not Bad to be sad. Everyone accepts us. 
There is nobody saying, you're overreacting. There's just kind and mindful interacting. We would not need loyalty cards because here we could gain the greatest reward being together, feeling, together, healing, together, weeping where no one would ever have to hide. And we could leave with loving connections, feeling closer, having cried. Um, so I like the idea of a crying cafe. Um, I used to do something, I, one of my old workplaces, we used to have a Friday cry. So we used to go into a room, uh, me and like two other colleagues, and we'd just cry. No way, for real? Yeah, yeah. We used a Friday cry. It was just the best way of getting all the stresses and stuff out because it's quite a high pressure job. Um, so we used to have a, a, a Friday cry and it does help. That's amazing, Mike, and uh, I, I, I've not heard anything like that before, and it's brilliant. I am not pretending for one moment that I am the person who is the best at dealing with other people crying, but I think it's something that, as a society, we, we often panic over. We don't necessarily have the experience, and to normalise crying, because it's such a a healthy thing to do, and many a word has been written on men crying, and you know, it's great for everyone to cry, and that's amazing that your workplace had that to happen. I've never heard that before, Mike. It wasn't a workplace thing, it's me and two colleagues said we need to have a Friday cry. Right, okay, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the crying cafe, are you allowed to do happy crying? Yeah, for sure, okay, definitely, good. yeah. <laughs> happy crying is good too. Great, um, so do you have another one of, of your poems for us? Absolutely, all right, second one coming up. So this is about Another kind of emotion. It's about being at a festival. It goes like this. I do not know your name. In Glastonbury, we're all defined by mud. Through rain, we dance, our names sliding off into mud. Walsing wellies leave imprints of laughter across druid drenched earth. When Björk sang, it takes courage to enjoy it. I'm sure she was singing about Glastonbury mud. It took courage for me to enjoy these thousands of voices cheering when all I had ever known from loud crowds was anxiety and beatings. I had learned to fear voices shouting, my blood on their fists would hide at home inside my headphones, break beats, not war. Mars as a girl, red-faced and scared of the world, scared of names hurled, stuck to me, mucky, men who called me dirty, called me filthy queer. But you do not know my names. In Glastonbury, we're all defined by mud. Through rain, we dance our names sliding off into mud. And now my voice joins this applauding chorus. Thousands in rain-coated androgynies, ecstatic, grounded harmony. Because we are courage. We are joy. We are dirty. We are filthy. We are mud. I like mud. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's tr it, uh, big festivals like Glasto, it is, it's a thing that everybody has, a, has on them. Doesn't matter what you're doing, where you're coming from, you are covered in mud, even if it's sunny. Yeah. You've been to any particularly joyful festivals, Mike? I've been, I've been to a couple, um, but I think the thing that I most took away from um, a festival was the fact that you can never run through a campsite. <laughs> you can only ever run through a campsite because it's always past tense. <laughs> right, shall I do the final Let, poem? Yeah, I think we should, I think we should, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, my final three today, I'm usually quite loud when I say my poems, but I've chosen like a, a gentler one to, to end on. This like is the two cool. become one of your poems. <laughs> The two become one of my poems. That's not going on tour posters, okay. that quote. It's not. It's not. <laughs> this is called I Am. It goes like this. 
It's sunny. I am running. In the park, two puppies play. I see a bird fly close to me, then watch it fly away. There's rhythm in my running, grounded rhythm in my feet. A thought is coming close to me. I'm feeling my heart beat. This thought calls me a loser. This thought tells me I'm cursed. This thought predicts a future where this thought says, fear the worst. The ones you love will leave you and you will break down and cry and no one else will care when they all die or say goodbye. I see this thought come close to me. Then watch it fly away. I let it go. I know the truth. I watch the puppies play. I'm here. I am not stress or fear. I'm here. I am not rage. I'm here. I am not sorrow. And my feelings aren't a cage. I am the rhythm of a breath. The puppies race and bark. The air is soft. The sun shines on these games played in the park. And when I watch the puppies play, their joy is all I see. I share a rhythm with today, a perfect place to be. Thank you for listening. That's great. It was, uh, was it a lot more slow and a little softer than the other ones, yeah? Definitely the two become one of your poems. <laughs> and references to dogs. I know how close you are to I, your dog. I, I, moment, yes. So, yeah. Yes, I do enjoy a puppy reference and uh, an inference about dogging. Um, oh, <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. I knew. My heartfelt tender poem. I thought, yeah, that's where Mike's going to go. That's where Mike's yeah, going to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, stick around because after this break, it's time for Dominic to give me his knowledge as he teaches me a lesson. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now we take a deep breath, relax, and get ready to be rammed with some knowledge in Teach Me a Lesson. Look at my classroom, how good is this? I've got a fish, I've got a fish leaping out of the book. How good is that? Right, 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 I'm ready for some knowledge Ramming, that's what this is about. And this. I have asked Mike to do a bit of homework, right? So I hope you've not been a bad student. I hope you've done this. It was simple homework. All I asked was one phrase, like, you know, a sentence, a line. It doesn't have to be like clever. I asked Mike, don't think about it too much. Just something that would be like the center of what the poem's gonna be about. Just one simple line. Now, I don't want you to say what it is yet, Mike, okay. but oh. do you do you have a line? So yeah, unlike, so like all the way through my scholastic career, I have actually done homework. Okay. Um, and I have got my phrase. Lovely, lovely. So I write poems to be spoken aloud and how I'm going to school you today <laughs> is creating a poem with the intent of it to be heard. Because there are differences between a poem that only exists on the page and uh, a poem to perform. I would say that a repeated phrase is one device that could be helpful. So I'm going to encourage you to think about including this phrase more than once, more than once. Like in my Glastonbury mud poem, I kept referring to that crying cafe. I don't think this is your opening line though, what you've got. Okay. I think, I think it might even, it might even like be the last line. Maybe what you write arrives to that, perhaps. Okay. Or maybe like crying cafe, I brought that concept in about a quarter of the way through. So okay. that's step one. Step two, mm -hmm. I would encourage not, not, you know, essential. I'd encourage a rhyming poem. Okay. 
Not all poems have to rhyme, but I would okay. encourage a rhyming poem for Is performance. There a for that? People listen differently to rhymes. I think okay. that it's a. Uh, it's an easier way to access something for the first time because in performance it's all about that immediate grab, that immediate grab. Oh, I do like being grabbed immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, have you got enough with which to start? I have, I have started. I have commenced. Oh, you've already have started? Already, right, yes. right. Do you know what? I'm going to keep on wittering while you're writing. Yeah, yeah I, I probably will ask some questions um, because I, I not written poetry since I was an angsty teenager. Keep coming back to that line. This is okay. why I asked you to think of it. So your rhymes should be words that guide you towards that, that theme. Even if you, you don't repeat the line I gave you all the time, whether you do or don't, use that as your anchor, use that as your compass, use that as your point that you don't end up with lines that are too confusing or not on topic. You want to use this line to make sure that what you say gives the listener a clear journey. Okay. Have you got any ideas of what rhymes with socks? <laughs> Blocks. Blocks. Like oh, the yeah. Chemical Brothers block okay. rocking beats. Block, block, rock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just write Chemical Brothers lyrics down then? Because that works. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> so I would encourage a uh, narrative to a performance poem. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be, but if like a story you've got like a beginning, middle and end, that could be a helpful way to structure a poem. Uh, before you start thinking about whether there's a rhythm or anything like that, just, just knowing where the poem's going. So with the Glastonbury Mud poem, the last line, we are mud, was actually the first concept I, I sort of came up with and I thought, well, is there a way to incorporate that into, into a journey like mud? Is it disgusting? Is it to be mm -hmm. celebrated? Is it joyful? Uh, what the, you know, and it, having that phrase mean different things at different points of the poem. That has sort of happened naturally. A big thing is just to get it written though. Don't mm -hmm. think too much just because- Just get it out there sort of thing. Yeah, just get it out there. Okay. Cause I think um, I often, am putting loads of pressure on myself. This next poem you write has to be as good as every other poem you've ever written and every other poem that every other poet has written. And that's an impossibility. Mm -hmm. I think that when we just get something on paper, if the rhyme maybe isn't as strong as we want it to be or the central theme isn't as, you know, things like this, like, it's, it's malleable. We can keep working, we can keep editing, we can keep changing things. So I think stopping before you've started is a common problem and something that, that I often do. And this is why I said that your line you came up with might not be the first line. I think uh, uh, a rookie way to begin is like, oh, I've got a great first line. Mm -hmm. And then you've used up all your best ideas in your opening. Whereas to have that great line or important line to you as something that maybe you come to a quarter the way through or maybe not even till the end of the poem gives you a place you're heading. And that's really helpful, I think, to almost work backwards. Be like, I, I know I want to say we are mud. I need to explain what that means. Crying Cafe, Crying Cafe, before I use the phrase Crying Cafe, I set up the premise of why crying is significant to me. So that journey is, is really, really helpful. And again, a big difference between poems that are only for the page is, is if someone's got a book, they can really take their time with more enigmatic concepts, more lyrical, themes and if you're writing to be performed I think I think we're, we're looking for that immediacy which is which is helpful when we're creating helpful to be thinking does this there, there can be extra layers like, oh here's what I get from the poem on a first listen here's what you might not necessarily get to a fifth or sixth lesson listen but again just, like just to people. interrupt you <laughs> is, is rotum a word <laughs> Um, no. Um, can, we, uh, can you use made up words or do they have to be actual words? You could bloat them. You could float them. Okay. 
<laughs> I don't think you want to float what I have. I'm, I'm <laughs> I think that consistency is important. So in answer to your question, can you use made up words? Only if you've used them early in the poem. This is why I said for the homework, come up with the theme, the anchor, the compass. Even if you don't use that phrase repeatedly, even if you use it once in your head, it's been the thing that's grounded you to stop you going off too much of a, of a tangent. I think that being on topic is so important to a poem which is performed really crucial okay great well i, I think i think I, i've come up with something really that I'm is quick close right. to my heart as well <laughs> oh no 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 why am i already shuddering at the uh, thought of what that might be and the fact i've asked you to rhyme something with yeah yeah <laughs> So thank you for teaching me that lesson, Dom. A um, joy, a joy yeah, yeah. to do uh, so, lots, yeah. Lots, lots of, of information went in my brain. Good. I don't think this is very good. Oh, now. But it's very true to me. All right, let's so, hear, let's okay. hear. In springtime's embrace, you bloom so bright. In tailored shirts of linen, a charming sight. Colours like petals, soft and sublime. But your gooch smells disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not yours. Oh, obviously, it's the poem. Um, <laughs> summer's heat, a fashion feat. Shorts and shades, a look so sweet. Sun kissed a lure in the warmest glow, but your gooch smells disgusting. <laughs> Autumn leaves in hues of gold. Grey joggers, a story unfolds. <laughs> Style whispers through the crisp air, but your gooch smells disgusting. Winter's chill, a fashion thrill, woolen scarves and jackets still. Snowflakes dance as elegance thrives, but your gooch smells disgusting. <laughs> Through the seasons you wear with grace, yet the truth remains a particular embrace. Your gooch smells disgusting, but I do love the taste. <laughs> well, Thanks. much like salt burn. There yes. is a twist there was in the tale. It was definitely yeah. a theme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you, you did it, didn't you? You yeah. put the phrase in, you know. Mm -hmm. that, that was a quite literally a repetition of that. And that really helps for it did. hearing it, a poem. It, it was easier to write. That's funny, Mike. Thanks. That's funny. Thank you. Really um, good. So that, that's my half assed attempt at. There's not half assed at all. That was great. You saw what it's actually with some great poetry. Yeah. Where are you going to be? Oh, do you know what? I'm not allowed to say. I'm not allowed to say. But tease a trailer, tease a trailer. I know last year, last year, I, I didn't go to any of the festivals. I wasn't. Okay. And I am this year. I'm not allowed to say which. In fact, some of them are penciled, but but one big one is it's exciting. So, yeah. So I'm going to be. So just check out my website. My name, dominicberry.net. I'll update everything on there when I'm allowed to say. Okay. We shall, we shall be following. We'll be on social media posting. Oh, as well. uh, yeah. Oh, okay. The Poet Dominic on Instagram. Perfect. Yeah. I'm sure we will reshare when that announcement comes out as well. Well, that is almost the end of the show. Just remember to join us on our social media, which is at the Cud TV. Thank you for watching, and we will see you all soon. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> I didn't write anything. <laughs> <laughs>